Hello, welcome to Adobe Creative Cloud Live. Let's make sure we press all the right buttons and we go live everywhere. Welcome everyone, welcome to Adobe Creative Cloud Live. A little bit early for me today. I normally do this around 1 p.m. Pacific time, but I got some other streams and things to do later on in the day. Well, not streams, but things I need to do. So I thought I would get this one done and get it in a little early. Maybe we'll also get a slightly different audience because we're going on at a different time. So with that said, welcome everyone. Welcome to Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, and our Auburn Muse photo, I see you as well. I see people watching on various different channels. And today we're gonna do, just do a quick one about a new feature that just came out literally a day ago in Photoshop. Um, and it's basically just giving you another option for selecting. As, as I used to say every time, a, a, back in the day when we were doing shrink wrap and every time a new major version of Creative or, or Photoshop would come out, I would always say, you know what? For every new version of Photoshop, there's another way to make a selection. And that's still holding true, even in the Creative Cloud. There's still new ways to make selections, and that's actually a good thing. It makes our job easier because the more options you have, for all the different photos you're gonna be working on, the better. So let's get to it. Let me switch over to my computer. I've got uh, Photoshop CC running here in the background and I've got no image open. I'm going to um, open up an image, or actually, we're gonna use this image as our background. Let me go ahead and open up this. This is one of my images from Iceland, for those of you who haven't seen this image before. And I've also, I just randomly went and found some stock images that I'm going to use as well. So these are all Adobe stock. I'm just gonna double click on some of these and open them up, get some of these open here. I'm not gonna do all of them just yet, but we're just gonna get a nice sampling of different photos to work with here. And uh, if I can scroll back over to my first one that I opened up. Uh, so what's this one click thing come on it can't be that easy you can't do something with just one click and have it work right um yeah you can and yes uh nafel it is already updated you can go get the update on adobe creative cloud right now and hello iris and hello um bashir and jenny and nafel and rafid welcome everyone and everyone else in the chat uh over on this side as well on the twitter side so welcome uh, so yeah, click or adding or making a selection with one click, it can be done. And now it can be done a lot easier. Think of this as, um, I'll explain the technology behind it, but think of it as more of an enhancement to quick select. Quick select, still a tool on the toolbar. And as you know, you can click and drag around and make a selection and it'll continue to add to that selection as you drag it around. But it usually takes some effort, takes some clicking, some dragging, to get the subject selected, especially when it's on a complex background. Photoshop doesn't know what this is, or at least it didn't used to. It would just look at this as a, as a layer of pixels, different colors, different shades, but I don't know that that's a guy in a red, or a red flower tie with a flower shirt on versus the background. Photoshop didn't used to know what that was. Now it does, thanks to, thanks to some artificial intelligence called Adobe Sensei. So we've been doing a pretty good job, especially on Adobe stock side, of figuring out when an image has a person in it and being able to even filter based on whether or not you wanna find images with people in them or not. So now that technology has made its way over to Photoshop so we can detect if there's a person or a subject versus something that's just the background. So it doesn't just work with people. I mean, we'll try to find other subjects, but it's really great with people. Now, um, how do you do it? Well, you'll notice that you still have your selection tools on the left-hand side. So I've got the rectangular marquee, elliptical marquee, my lasso tool, and my quick select tool. So normally the quick select tool is underneath the lasso, or I'm sorry, the magic wand. I have separated it out, but what, however you get to it, go ahead and switch over to the Quick Select tool. When you're on the Quick Select tool, you'll now notice a new button in the control panel that is called Select Subject. That is brand new as of the last 24 hours. So you don't see it on the magic wand. 
You don't, oh, actually, you do see it on the Magic Wand. You don't see it on all the selection tools. You don't see it on the Lasso. You don't see it on the um, Elliptical Marquee. You don't see it on the Rectangular Marquee. But if you're on Quick Select or Magic Wand, you will see it. So when I'm on Quick Select, now I'm not going to hold down anything. I'm going to show you my other hand. I'm just going to go ahead and click Select Subject. That's it. It'll think for a second because it has to analyze the photo and said, what's the subject? I'm guessing it's this guy, and it did. It found it. Now, quick select doesn't mean perfect selection. and doesn't always get it right because it is artificial intelligence. So they left off some hair, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. But it basically, for the most part, did what I would normally have to do with the um, quick select tool a lot faster. I didn't have to drag all around the face and the shirt and make sure I got the arms and make sure I didn't miss anything. It just did it in one click. Let's try it again. Let's go to a different photo. Let's grab this guy. Same thing. I'm already on the quick select tool, so just select subject. One hand, one click, and a few seconds later, boom, it selected him. Again, not a great job on the, on the flyaway hair, but it did the most work for me. It did 99% of the work for me. It got the fact that that's a person. All right, let's keep going. Here's another guy. Select subject. One click, found him, and did a much better job on the hair because he doesn't have as much flyaway hair on that one side. But it figured out that that was our subject. All right, ooh, what if it's two people? I, I, I thought about this, so I grabbed these stock images right before the stream, and I said, huh, I wonder if it works on two people or not. So I grabbed this image just to find out. So let's uh, click select subject, one click, boom. It found both people. It figured that they were both part of your subject. All right, let's keep going. Let's go to this one. Two different people, but some different objects in the mix. They both have coffee cups. One's interacting with the coffee cup. The other one's just sitting there. I was curious to see what would happen if we did this. So select subject. And a few seconds later, it did kind of what I would have done. You can't avoid the one that's holding the coffee cup. Yeah, I mean, you could if you wanted to, but so it made the coffee cup part of that selection, but it tried to leave out the book, which I would probably just go ahead and add the book in. But on the, on the lady on the right, it did the right thing. It said, oh, that coffee cup's not part of her. I'm not going to select it. Now, of course, any of this can be overridden. If I want to add the coffee cup in, I can do it manually. I can now say, go to my quick select tool and add that part in. But what it's doing for me with one click is saving me time. It's saving me the, the drudgery of having to drag around all on both subjects, trying to make sure I get it all, make sure I don't miss anything. It's doing all that for me in one click. And the fact that it did it this well, even with something that's kind of sketchy, uh, meaning that one's got a cup, one doesn't, you know, one's got a book, one doesn't, it did a really good job in that case. Now, in this one, there's two subjects, but one is kind of in focus and one is out of focus. So I wasn't really sure what it was going to do in a case like this, so I wanted to find out. Again, select subject, and it guessed. It said, well, I don't think that's what you want because he's out of focus. I'm going to select her. And whether or not that's what you wanted or not, it made that guess. So that is artificial intelligence at its best. It tries to decide what it thinks you want. It may not always get what you want, but at least it did a good job in this case. If I wanted him, now I would just go ahead and quick select and add him in. But it figured, since he's more out of focus than she is, it grabbed her instead. All right, so I'm going to close the ones I don't need. I don't need that one. I don't need that one. don't need that one. don't need that one. don't need that one. Back to our subject here, our mountain. And I'm going to now show you what to do in the case of hair. I'm going to drag this guy on. And this guy's got wavy hair. I'm going to move him up, put him right in position there. And he's on a more complex background. It's lighter on one side, bricks on the other, a door's there, so forth and so on. So once again, more of a real world scenario. This is the kind of stuff we run into all day long. It's great if they're on a white or gray background. It's easy to select, perfect, but you don't always get that luxury. So let's go ahead and say select subject. 
And wait a second, and boom, it got him. It did exactly what I would have done with the quick select tool, but we have some refinements to do. It didn't really get the hair quite the way I would really need it to be gotten. So in this case, this is when you move over to the next button, select and mask, because that's what select and mask is for. It's for getting those fine uh, hairs, those flyaway hairs, those things that are a little bit more difficult to get. So let's go ahead and do select and mask. And I have this, it puts me in, first of all, the view mode that it defaults to is onion skin. And onion skin has a nice slider so you can slide between what the background is and what it would look like right now with the current selection. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of cool with the current selection, but let's refine it a little bit better. So I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit so I can kind of see the original background. I'm going to go ahead and turn on some things I normally always turn on. I always turn on Smart Radius because I think Smart Radius for me does a much better job around the hard edges versus the soft edges. I'm going to give it a little bit of radius to work with. But then to get those hairs, I'm going to switch over to, which it does for me, the Refine Edge Brush. I'm going to make that brush a little smaller. I'm going to pick up my Wacom Stylus here. And we're just going to go in and just paint on that existing background to kind of bring some more of that hair in around the edges there. So if I were to now look at that, there we go. And if I were to look at the mask for that, this is what I just did. And look at, you know, there I could probably, probably get rid of that, but look at what it did here on the hair. Look at those fine hairs that it's selecting there. So I can go in and say, okay, I can kind of see that, ooh, I don't want that stuff up there. Let's hold down our option key with the brush and just simply brush that stuff out of it. I don't need those extra, those extra pixels around the edge. Then we can come back to our refine radius tool. So yes, the refine radius tool does work. Ooh, kind of doing the same thing there. It does work even in uh, the mask mode here. So I can kind of just go in and refine that edge and get some of that hair and then brush away. Some of that erroneous stuff I don't need. I'll probably go in with a smaller brush and do a better job on that. But you get the idea. Let's get rid of that too. And now we switch back to our regular mode so we can see it. Onion skin, 100% or not. That's the selection we would end up with. And now we're going to simply say output that to a layer with a mask. And boom. That's it. We have our new subject on a transparent background now. We move him around, we can kind of see, ooh, I did leave some little flyaways there. Let's go ahead and mask those out. I didn't see those. He's got a little alfalfa thing going on at the top of his head there. That's okay. Let's just get rid of some of that. I'm just masking it out um, versus erasing it because you never know. All right, but anyway, got rid of those little hairs at the top there, but you got the idea. Uh, if we zoom in on this, we can see, look at the beautiful job it did on the hair there. Look at how great that looks on a, on a subject that really wasn't on a plain background. Now, the only other thing we do just for kicks is we would say, or not for kicks, but to make it look better, we wouldn't want the studio or room light against this mountain that he's that he was shot under because the mountain's a different, just a different color, a different tone versus the lighting he was in in the room that he was photographed in. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that mask. I'm gonna hold down my um, command key in this, ooh, you know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't wanna do this just yet, hold on. Let's put him back in the center first, back where he was. Then I'll do this, then I can move it around. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna get the uh, selection around the object again. So I hold down my command key on the Mac. PC, that would be the control key. Now that I have that selection of the subject again, I'm going to go to the, my mountain background. So I'm on the background layer. Hit Command J to duplicate that selection of the mountain onto its own layer and move it above him. So basically, we just cut out the mountain, put it on a layer by itself in the shape of our subject. That's all I did so far. But we're going to use that to color him to kind of blend him in to the same kind of color as the background, basically from a lighting perspective. All right, so let's put back everything else. Now with this layer, uh, we're gonna call this our color layer. With our color layer, we're gonna do two things. 
We're going to go to the filter menu. We're going to go to blur and we're going to average. In other words, take all the colors that are there and average them together. So it's going to give me one solid color. That's basically an average of them. Great. Now we're going to set the blend mode of that layer to color. Because that's what we want to do. We want to colorize our subject with it. That's a little too much. So you can turn down the opacity. Usually I start around 35, 37%. And that will give me this versus that. See how this one's a little bit too warm for this cold mountain scene. That one kind of cools them off a bit, kind of makes them blend into the same colors. Now there's some other lighting things we do to kind of blend them in more, but that gives him the same kind of color as the environment that we just composited them onto. All right, so you have seen me select multiple subjects with one click, and then you saw me finish it off by putting this guy on a totally different background than the one he was on. And if we go back to our original, this is what we started with, and this is where we are now. So, pretty cool. Have a little fun with some artificial intelligence, now in Photoshop CC. All right, Jamie Feldman, thanks for joining. Uh, Jonathan, glad you think it's clever. Nelson, yeah, I think it's wild too. Nicole, yes. Um, Violetta, hello from Canada. Hello, Canadian, Canadians, Canucks. All right. Thanks, that was awesome. Thank you. I think it's awesome too. I get to take, you know, I get to show you the cool stuff, but it's really the Photoshop engineers that make all this magic happen. All right, thanks everybody. And that was it. We're right on time. Uh, I don't see any real questions other than you can go try this right now. And once again, just for giggles, since we have a couple minutes left, all we did, for those of you who just got here, just need a quick recap. Open up your photo, go to the quick select tool, Select subject. Wait a few seconds. Boom. And it will figure out what the subject is in your photo. Hopefully successfully. It is artificial intelligence. It won't work 100% of the time on 100% of the photos. But when it does, it's awesome. And then once you're ready, composite your subject onto a new background. Much, much easier than you were 48 hours ago. All right. So with that said, Thanks, everybody, for watching. We will catch you on the next one. If you're interested in UX UI design, there is a live stream going on right now over at behance.net slash live. Uh, today is Wednesday, so they're on day two. Uh, that goes till 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern. They're streaming all day, 9 to 5, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week on UX UI design using Adobe XD. So with that said, thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers, and we will catch you on the next one. I'm streaming tomorrow. I'm going to be with the Creative Residence. So we're going to talk about the Creative Residency program here on the Adobe Creative Cloud channel. Um, and you're welcome, Cranberry uh, Lantern. Uh, glad you liked the demo as well. So welcome, everybody. And again, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. I'll see you back tomorrow on the same channel, different time, 2.30 Eastern, which is 11.30 Pacific. I think that's right. Uh, 2.30 Eastern Time, I'll be here with Andre, uh, for photo photographer, one of our photographer creative residents who will talk about the program and talk about how you can become a creative resident for Adobe, where you get to work for Adobe for a year on very cool projects and stuff. So with that said, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Uh -huh.